Welcome to another unboxing video from theplayersaid.com. My name is Grant. Today I'm unboxing a brand new game from Thin Red Line Games that covers the uh, campaigns of Alexander the Great. So this is an Ancients game. The game is called The Fate of All. And the subtitle is Strategicon Book One, Alexander's Campaign Against the Persian Empire, The First Diadochi War, and Other Deeds. So this may be the first in a series. Um, if any of you know Thin Red Line, Line Games, Fabrizio Vianello, he has designed a couple of uh, series. C3 is one, um, which typically covers Cold War Gone Hot, Modern Warfare, but this one is a step back in the ancients. One point I want to uh, point out immediately I know a lot of people have complained or at least made comments about Fabrizio's use of AI art. Um, I do appreciate that he used this mosaic. I think this is an actual mosaic from s somewhere. I'm not sure where it is, but it is. Uh, I think it looks really good on the front. So he did try to use some of that. You can see the box is very, very glossy. An interesting looking box. You can see here on the spine, you have the title and different information. And then there is nothing on the back. So that's pretty rare. I'm not sure I'm a huge fan of that, but that, that's fine. It's Fabrizio's company and he's going to do it the way he wants to do it. And he's been pretty, uh, pretty successful. I think the important part here is that the game inside, I'm sure, will be fantastic. I've seen a couple of people playing it online, and it does look very cool. So I'm very much looking uh, forward to exploring this. First thing you see when you open it, there are a ton of baggies. I'll use counter trays. Uh, there are two ten ciders, kind of a fluorescent orange and a green, pretty standard. And then here are uh, the fate cards. I'll go ahead and remove that. Um, here is where I believe this is AI art here on the uh, backs of the cards. That was a choice that he made um, to use that AI art because of cost. I think he looked at a couple different options, and I'm not trying to be an apologist for him or comment necessarily about that. Um, but the cards look pretty good. They're really good, uh, thick quality but you can see there's just a bunch of different types of events and things that happen. Only comment I would have is I'm not sure. I, the art looks good in the background, but then it makes the text quite a bit harder to read. That's just my opinion. There you've got a Minotaur. Uh, maybe that the, the picture should have been below and the, whatever. But they look good. Um, different types of events you can see here. There are tons of them. Looks like about 20 cards, give or take, all with uh, great looking art. I'm not sure whether that's AI made or these are borrowed from existing art or paid for, not, not really sure. But there's a look at the cards. So the game does use cards in the design. The next thing you'll notice is there are a ton of booklets. There are three of them. One is the rules of play, and there you have that mosaic picture again there on the front and then here you have the scenarios and the designer notes followed by the strategicon and i think i'll start here with the uh the strategicon when i opened this i kind of looked this over basically what this is is a walkthrough of the different type uh, different mechanics marching supply um, those kinds of things, which I think is very, very good. There's some nice pictures there that help you understand. By the way, there are army sheets, and you're going to line up your counters, which I think is a pretty cool way. So this is a strategic game, uh, and you're not going to have a ton of counters on the board. They're going to be shown up on those army sheets. So here's an example of what the board might look like. A couple of leader counters with a supply token or two underneath them, and then an army counter. So yeah, this is kind of a kind of a walkthrough of the different mechanics, so it should be easy, uh, easier to pick up. The rules are pretty thick. Uh, let's go ahead and flip to the very back. Page 23, so there are 23 pages of rules. 
Not too bad, but there's some dense, dense text here. Uh, I'll need to look these over and then we'll try to get, we're definitely going to give this one a try, uh, hopefully sometime soon. But lots of detail, thick, very small printing. Uh, there's a look at the combat units. I did an interview with Fabrizio. It's on the blog. If you want to know a little bit more detail, you can look that up. Uh, he always does a great job. I love the way he drifts in and out of thematic talk uh, and vocabulary as he's going through games. Always find that very, very interesting. So yeah, there's the rule book, 24 pages, and then the scenarios. So you're going to have a whole bunch of scenario options here. There are two, three, looks like there are four different scenarios. There's a campaign option, campaign one, and then smaller scenario one, scenario two, and scenario three and four. So there are five total options. There may be more than that, frankly. Um, there it looks like there's some additional rules. I'm not sure what those are for. They say the Spartan Revolt. So maybe those are conditions that you can start under. Maybe this is just an extension of the rule book leading into the campaign. So here we go. Here's a look at the first campaign, the Anger of Achilles, campaign one. And gives you the Persian setup there. You can see that's a whole bunch of units, right? You're going to set those up once again in, in army groups, assets, Persian leaders that are be, to be used, and then the Macedonian setup. So you can see that's the way uh, these are laid out. Lots of detail. Once again, small text, lots of information, but it looks to be organized in an interesting and unique fashion. So I'm sure it's going to be uh, e easy to grok. Uh, but there you go. Those are the three booklets. Very nicely done booklets. Uh, those are going to stand up very well. Uh, and if you need more, you can you can obviously copy those. There's also a chart and table box. These are uh, the, the, I think these are, uh, this is a setup card, I believe. No, maybe it's not. It's just kind of an insert showing, there we go, showing the different scenarios and where you're going to be playing. That's kind of cool. So it just gives a big overview of the entire map and then where those individual scenarios are. So I, I like that, that's kind of nice. Here are those army boxes. You have a Macedonian and a Persian box. You've got fleet boxes there at the bottom. You've got uh, morale and treasury at the bottom of the page. You have that for both, and then armies one through four. Those are single-sided. And then here you have the administrative track turn track, different uh, events, cards, etc., and then movement point tracks. So those are nice cards that are going to help you play the game. So then you get into a couple, and here's where I like, he provides two copies of these. These are the charts and tables books. So each player is going to have an, uh, the ability to have one of these at their disposal. It's just, here's some movement. So it looks at the terrain legend and helps you understand the different abilities, reconnaissance, marching. And then here you have the different attack tables, surrender, siege, assault, sacking, all the different modifiers. So these are your typical CRTs that you'll see in war games. Um, but once again, each player has their own. A foraging table, sea shipping table, attrition, various morale modifiers, bribery, and donations. Obviously, there's a lot in this game. This is a strategic game, so it deals with every, everything. A little bit of politics and economy and management of dollars, as well as combat. And then here you have the uh, land combat table, movement tables, missile combat table, and melee combat table with all the modifiers. And then on the back, there's a legend about the units, the different unit types, the force costs when you end up buying those. Uh, the shipyards that you have access to, and then where you can recruit and what type of units you can recruit in those areas. So yeah, those are cool. But once again, there's two of those. Really enjoy that. Always feel like that's a good addition to any game uh, to make it that much more, more playable. Let's move these over a little bit. Uh, there are four counter sheets, five counter sheets, sorry. There are five total counter sheets. So I'm gonna have to get my clipping hand ready 
uh, and get these clipped. They are not pre-rounded. That would have been amazing. I had them upside down. Let me make sure I turn those all right side up as we look at them. But here's a close up look. Uh, obviously, these are Macedonian troop phalanxes, archers, uh, cavalry. There's some of the fleets. Very nice looking counters. I think these were AI created, if I'm not mistaken. Love the uh, baggage train. You've got the oxen drawing that cart there. Pretty cool. Siege train one, and then you've got all the various leaders. And then over here, we more leaders, different types of units, infantry, other types of cavalry, hoplites, and then some more uh, fleets. So yeah, these are, are, look, once again, these appear to be all of the, maybe those are Persian. No, those are Macedonian. Yeah, hoplites. So there's, and then there's a bunch of administrative counters here, attrition, etc. So there's two of the counter sheets. Here you've got uh, just a bunch more units. And these are the Persian units. Boy, those are cool looking. And then all those leaders, their fleets there at the bottom, their baggage trains. Oh, that's interesting. The, uh, <coughs> the baggage train counters are facing different ways. Where did I see that? Well, anyway, uh, I, I think on the Macedonian counters, they were facing right. These appeared to be facing left, and I think that's kind of cool. Other types of cavalry and other units. Uh, Double-sided units. I didn't turn those around. Really nice-looking counters. They're fairly simple. There you have the Indian uh, units with their elephants. Always fun. Yeah, th those, those look great. And then here's some more kind of administrative counters. Supply. Macedonian control, depleted, uh, inside city siege, sacked, engaged in melee, rough terrain there at the bottom and forest, and then plunder and requisition tokens. The game as a strategic game is a lot about supply, as many ancient games. Uh, we recently played Imperium Romanum again, and it had a ton of supply, baggage trains, etc. So that's a very common part uh, there are five full maps. These are huge maps, by the way. Probably not going to get to show you each one of them. Um, that might just be overkill. But let's go ahead and turn this one over. Probably one of the, the least attractive. But, you know, I think it looks pretty good. I actually like the big hexes. You can notice they are they're fairly sizable hexes because they have bigger counters. The terrain features are clear, and I actually like how he's kind of roughed in different, although this may be the same plains area, he's roughed in a little bit different look and feel. Um, yeah, those look really good. Let's go ahead and get one that has some more populous areas. This one has some ocean. Let's go ahead and flip that over the camera. There you go. Well, it's upside down. Yeah, big, big maps big maps and that's a good thing but there you go these are kind of the greek islands the archipelagos there let me move that box over a little bit lots of sea area but yeah the different lands you can see the big names of the areas very easy to make out shallower water deeper water so yeah the boards look really good and there's a bunch of them so here's another one and another one and another one. Once again, five total maps. This is a big game, not for the faint of heart. Um, and maybe we're the faint of heart. I'm not really sure, but we're definitely going to give it a try and hopefully enjoy the heck out of it. I uh, very much enjoy Ancients games and very much looking forward to playing this one. I think it'll be pretty fun and uh, hopefully we all have a, we have a good time playing it. I did read where I think it's almost sold out. Uh, we did buy this copy, so you, you may end up ultimately being out of luck. With his games, I think you got to strike fast, and then he'll ultimately do a reprint in the next second edition or whatever in the near future. But yeah, great looking game. The Fate of All, designed by Fabrizio Vianello and published by Thin Red Line Games. 
This one's a brand new 2024 release. It's probably been out for 30 days. Uh, I'm just finally getting around to unboxing it. So looking forward to clipping it, getting it ready for the table, grokking the rules, and getting this one played. So thanks for watching. I've been Grant from The Player's Aid.